All right, so we made a little move, ran to the back of a major creek arm. Um, you know what's really cool though, I kind of mentioned it starting out these video series um, with the mapping and uh, the ability to adjust your water level on the Garmin Ultra Echo Map. And uh, if you can see right here, you see my trail running up through here. I put it at 99.9 .9 feet down lake level. I think it's at 106, right? Yep, 106. So close 100, enough. 10. Um, but when you're running, you know, even on a body of water you don't know, I haven't been here when it's this level, but you can see you want to stay in these creek channels because some of these points on these flats run way out here and I mean it'll be you know it looks deep but it could be three foot deep over there in big rock pile so the ability to adjust your water level and then stay in that creek channel you can see right here when we were running up I kind of got close to one and I seen it kind of jetted out away from that flat and you just run that creek channel so you don't want to go up on those flat contours especially in a low water condition if you want to save your mercury outboard you better you better get the right equipment you know this is the west coast uh or the western chip i believe they call it garmin right yep we have one for the east coast as well and i mean those are lifesavers like when you're on ufala anywhere okeechobee even i mean if you know where the contours are and if you don't stay away from those shallow hazard areas you're in trouble hey you know i mean <laughs> for one you, you talk about a western fishery what's so cool about a western fishery is you know, these are reservoirs, so they're going to constantly fluctuate. Uh, mapping is key, but, you know, if you guys tune in to the past few weeks of vlogs, really had a good time. We've established that these fish are in the back of creeks right now. The water temp is cold, around that 40, 48, 49 degrees. We're going to the back of a creek here to start this vlog off. Uh, we're going to do a, a variety of things. We don't know what we're going to catch them on yet, but it's going to be fun, so make sure you guys stay tuned. And uh, let's go do it, Jared. We're almost there. Yeah. Right. I'm a long liner. Seriously? Why not? Dude? Look at him, dude. That's what I'm saying. Just go for a little while and I'll long line this thing. What are you guys doing today? Long line of Picolos? <laughs> oh. For real, bite. Really? Darn it. Man, am I working this thing right? Yeah. Are you supposed to work it more? No. Very little. And I'll just go. You got, he's on, dude. Get him. Oh, shoot. My reels is all jacked up. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. God. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> dude, the reels. No, dude, the, my line was on the on like this. Oh, that was funny, dude. God. Oh. You're like, there's one on there. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm like, floating there's fly. one on there. Floating fly is not my forte. It got him that time. Oh, yeah, look at this hammerhead. Dude. Dude. Dude, float and fly. Cody, I'm on the float and fly team. You on them? I'm gonna get a patch. Got him. Dude, this is kind of fun, man. Dude, it is fun, huh? I mean, I'm, dude, honestly, this is like the third bass I've ever caught on a float and fly, and I know it's like, guys catch big ones out here. Yeah, I, mean, they I do. don't know what I'm doing. I just, Rig this thing up. So let me ask you though, if you were to do this, you know, say like at Lanier or I mean here for example, let me just a little cooking cutter. The longer the rod, the better, right? So at least am I doing that correct? Yeah, yeah. You want a um, you know seven and a half to an That's eight foot rod. I got, I got a seven foot six medium light. Yep. Satula. Yep. So I'm okay there. Perfect. I just don't know what I'm doing with it. Hey. Like I tied this on just to experiment and Cody's like, you know, you know what you're doing, Littner. I'm like, yeah, you're right. So I've missed like three or four and he's like, dude, you're a spaz. But I mean, 
It's like I'm crappie fishing. Hey, you're but they on. catch big ones, huh? They do, 100%. It catches big ones. You know, this is the time of the year. You, you look at guys like um, Ott Defoe, who we fish against, Tennessee River, yeah. Tennessee guy. I mean, he's he's got that that technique dialed for sure. Does he really? Like he fishes on tour? He, uh, I don't know if he fishes on tour, but just cold water months, you know, that thing's really gonna shine. So I'm throwing like six pound line. Is that, would that be too heavy? I'm throwing six pound sun line. No. Sniper. I mean, no. you, the guys throw like four. They do. They they absolutely do. It's it's a. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead. I'm a preference, but I think six is pretty much the the standard. You know, to start with. I mean, any any lower than that, it's a whole new game. You got to have a lighter rod, um, better. You know, the best drag you can get. Just. But from what you've told me, and certain guys that you know, it's like, dude. You don't reel set on it like you would like with a drop shot. I mean, you gotta you gotta set the hook. You right? gotta set the hook. Yeah. Because you, your line from the bobber from the float going to your bait, there's a lot of line going straight down, and then you're going like this. Yep. Did I have one? You did. I don't see. I don't even know. We gotta get excited. Let's get ready. Need some energy. Let's get some energy. We need it. Uh oh. Cody, the old floating flyer, huh? You get him? Dude, look at this one. Oh, look at that, Cody. Dude, I am fastly, quickly becoming floating fly expert. Dude. That's a nice one, man. <laughs> Dude. Look at this. Look at this. I better get right in. Dude, look at that. Hey, is that what you were saying earlier? The black spots, future five pounds? Black pounders? spots, man. You see black spots on a spotted bass. Look at that little guy. It's a nice one. Yeah, that ain't a cold, little guy. Dude. So cold. That's cool. Float and fly. I'm an expert. Hey, you are. I don't even know what I'm doing. You know what? We just got up here, though. You know, again. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You got loose. <laughs> Back of uh, back of the creek, you know, this is what we've kind of established, like say in the weeks, uh, the last few vlogs here, and, and these fish are definitely, seem like they're in the back um, of these pockets in these creeks, and there's just a lot of bait up here. I mean, really, really good stuff, and man, it sure didn't take long, you know, for you to catch one there. You're throwing a float and fly, I'm dragging a dart head around, and different things, and Let's see what we could find, man. But that's that's definitely a good start, huh, buddy? Yeah, man. Well, it's interesting though because we fished down some of this rock a little bit, caught one or two little guys, and you get to a do nothing mud. It, those bigger fish, they like that sometimes, huh? Yeah, it's definitely warmer. You know, warmer. you're talking the water up here is 47 degrees, so it's getting colder, colder, and uh, you know it's that slow presentation. I'm working my bait real slow. So are you. Sometimes uh, that's what you need to do to, to get some of these bites. Do you think, you think those mud banks, you think anything to do with like maybe crawfish, more crawfish on them? I think personally the mud banks. Are just, it has to all do with the warmth. It's gonna be warmer. There's definitely gonna be more crawdads. And more importantly, a little rocky outcropping or something real obvious gets fished. Those mud banks don't. Yeah. You look at a mud bank over here, you know, no one's gonna race to go start there. Where if it's a beautiful, rocky, you know, jaggedy point, basically where everyone's gonna fish. So kind of a combination of both. But, you know, I typically, when you're in the back of some of these, like to Man. fish that stuff. I gotta pay attention. Oh, Cody. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ooh. Ooh. Little one, Cody. Little. Robo Ned. That cute little guy. All right, boys. Vlog time. Game on. Oh, oh. Dude, we found the nursery, man. Dude, this isn't Cody Myers juice, I promise you. Cut. <laughs> Got him. 
Oh. Oh. They were both farming. <laughs> oh, Bubba. Yeah. Get him. Good. Nursery. Dude, that's a nice one. <laughs> Dude, this might be a little better one. Maybe. Over, over there? No. no. We were just going mock ten in the other direction. <laughs> Dude. Every throw, Cody. Hey, right, well, I can tell you one thing. What's up? We're on some fish. <laughs> yeah. Just right now, we're catching this year's spawn. Pretty much, yeah. Hey. It's getting better. I mean, hard to pull away from those sides. On? There we go, Jared. Dude, come on, man. I'm like, I'm like cleaning up and you're whacking them. Hey. Gonna take advantage of the situation, boys. Dude, that was a power play you just did. Look at me. that. Hey. Spot. You know, I'm really excited about this afternoon. It's, uh, you know, I feel like right now we're in an area with a lot of fish. It's not a big one, but, you know, we're, again, we're, we're around a bunch of fish. A bunch of bait is up here. And this is a typical wintertime uh, program, you know, pattern on some of these reservoirs. You can, you can really target a lot of these fish, especially in the afternoon. They're gonna move back up, they're gonna push a bait in the back of these creeks. Right now we're at the back of one of these river arms and what I like to target is some of these steeper banks um, that they have some kind of a structure, like a feature where there's gonna be a turn right here, a little rock pile, just a really good ambush point on uh, you know, where you're gonna get more bites, more high production areas. On him again. What do you got? Oh, it's a fish I was in a stump. Really? Nice little spot. He just hung up in there, huh? Yeah, it must have been hung up on a stump. Gets you excited. Nice little thick spot of bass. You know, I'm throwing this little Daiwa uh, Nico straight. It's made by Yamamoto. The thing actually bit the tail off, but really cool little bait to throw on the Nico rig. I'll have to re-rig one up and, and show you guys, but uh, just a ton of action. You know, how I'm fishing this bait, you're fishing these steeper banks, and I'm kind of just shaking it down, you know, letting it fall down, really kind of stair-stepping this bait down. And the fish seem to be in that 15 to 20 foot zone right now on some of these steeper walls. You know, so a Nico rig, you know, that's a bait, a technique I've thrown for a long time. I uh, learned about it probably roughly 15 years ago. Have a box with my drop shot weights, my nail weights in here. This is a little Bass Mafia ice box, full of all the stuff I need to do. So if you're not familiar with this, I want to show you kind of how I'm rigging this particular worm I'm throwing right now. This is a little 5.8 Nico straight uh, by Daiwa, actually made by Gary Yamamoto. This happens to be one of my favorite colors. It's 301, green pumpkin. Uh, with some some purple in there What I like to do is I like to take the nail weight You know and you're gonna put it directly in the head of this bait just like this You're gonna rig it all the way down a 332nd ounce nail weight just like that. Okay now I'm gonna put a little band on here uh, This is actually a little tool and a little band designed by G7. It's Shin Fukai's company um, I buy these off tack warehouse just like everyone else, but you're gonna open that up just like that there you're gonna slide this through. So I really like these clear bands, you know, that Shin makes here, G7. You can kind of get it wherever you want. You can you shut it down and it's gonna come off just like that. Now, the reason the bands are pretty important is when you hook the bait on there, like I'm gonna do, and you catch a fish, if you don't have a band, more than likely, 
every single fish is gonna throw the bait. You know, this is the owner of a little sniper finesse hook. I'm gonna rig it through just like this here. Now, this thing's gonna go on the bottom, gonna have a lot of action. And why I like this worm, guys, is this tail has a lot of action. So when this thing is on the bottom, it's clicking on the bottom here, this tail's gonna have a lot of shake, a lot of shimmy. You can pull it through the water, you can see. When a fish bites down, it's gonna slide up the line. You're gonna catch multiple fish on the same rig. And that is the rig right now that I'm throwing, getting a ton of bites on. Got that little guy. Got him? Yeah, he's just a little. The old Ned, dude. Dude, it's hard to go wrong with a Ned and spotted bass, right? It is, man. Small mouth, spotted bass, even large mouth, but especially those spots, man, they just go crazy. He's just little. Yeah, he's locked in there. Look at that. Let him go. Let him go. We can catch a bigger one, Cody. Nico? Nico. Dude, that's not, not a bad one. No. Nico. Got him. Bait slides up the line there. You know, so how I like to fish this Nico rig, um, it's very similar to the Ned rig. I think Jared will agree, but you know, I like to throw it out there. D doesn't matter if you're you're fishing flat, uh, tapering points, pockets, cuts, or a steep wall like this. But bottom contact is again going to be really, really key. So I'm going to shake it and not try to pull it really far off the bank. So short little shakes with the rod, just like this. You got one, and I got one there. But you really want to, you know, this is just a little guy. You really want to keep it in that strike zone, so to speak, you know, right on the bottom. A lot of times I'll, I'll have a guy, you know, a co-angler in a uh, tackle warehouse pro circuit event uh, or, or when I was back, you know, fishing a long time ago. And, and they'll, they'll really shake it off the bottom and you're pulling it where it doesn't look realistic. Yeah, you're, you're implementing too much action into it. Yep. So, same thing with his Ned, you know, I'm kind of just throw it out there, make sure it hits the bottom and then just kind of shake slack, shake your slack more than you're shaking the worm actually. And, and you'll be surprised how much action that's giving that bait, you know, and especially with colder the water temp, you don't want, you don't want a ton of action, uh, you know, whether you're throwing a worm or jig, you're just kind of more, you know, steady, slow retrieve, uh, slider twitches of the rod and you know, I mean, occasionally, you know, you can, maybe if you know you're around them, you know, give that a bait a jump or something and they'll react to it, but. And, and you know, think of this, when you're in cold water, like we are today, uh, that 47 degree water, these fish aren't really super active. They're, they're not gonna, if you're waiting for that bite to just dunk, really bite it, it's more than likely not gonna happen, so. A lot of times it's just a pressure bite, it's a mush bite, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna pick it up off the bottom. It's gonna feel a little bit heavier. Most of the time those fish are gonna come up, they're gonna grab it, slowly swim off the bank. So, you know, really don't expect that hard, vicious bite. It's gonna be a mush pressure bite, especially when it's cold like today. But it's three o'clock, I guarantee you we can get a vlog done sometime today. <laughs> I mean, what do we got, Daniel, on this vlog? Bunch of rats. I mean, anything worth using? A couple of those. Yeah, I'll try and make something out of it. I'll try to make something out of it. <laughs> Jared can go in depth on the Ned. That's valuable <laughs> right there. People pay big money for that. <laughs> Another little one. I mean, they're kind of fun though. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah. We haven't got no big ones in here, but it's fun getting bites. Sometimes, especially when it's tough, getting a bite is better than not getting a bite. I know that's a little tiny fish, but I want to show you right here. So this is your basic net worm. Everybody that's bass fishing pretty much knows what a net worm is. It's a stand up head. There's several different you know, baits to use. Some of them float, some of them lay, you know, sink. Uh, so be really aware of that. Cody's wrecking another one. Um, this here is a Robo Ned P1. 
People's Worm is one of my favorite kind of clear water colors throughout the country. I've caught them coast to coast on this color. Uh, Desert Craw is another favorite of mine. Um, and again, we, we kind of talked about it earlier, you know, just fishing it more on a slack line. Um, this here is a fifth ounce. Uh, it's a laser trocar jig head is what this is, a finesse jig head. But what makes this kind of cool is the Pro V bend. Um, that's something that I am a firm believer in having that Pro V bend. Um, it really locks those fish in and you got the, you know, obviously the sharp, real sharp point. Um, and then the hook keeper or the bait keeper right here on the shank. So when you slide this up there, even though I, I might have just ruined the worm by getting it off there, I probably caught, I don't know, 15 or 20 of them on that same worm. You slide it up there, that bait's gonna stay up there. It kind of locks it in. You don't need to use super glue or anything like that. But uh, just a really neat head. It just came out maybe, I think last year around ICAST time, Pro V Trocar Finesse Jig Head. So. Um, they make some with a weed guard on them also. We're kind of fishing more open water, like if I was fishing around brush or trees or something more like that, I'd, I'd use the, uh, the weed guard on there. But uh, that's the basic setup right there. Throwing on a six pound line, um, and you know, just because this water's clear. But uh, again, it's just don't overwork the bait, I guess, especially in cold water conditions. Wouldn't you agree, Cody? Absolutely, that, that's really the key. I mean, too much movement in 46, 47 degree water, is really gonna, you know, have your bites go way off. So real slow movements, keep it on the bottom. It's really gonna uh, help you catch more fish when it's tough conditions. And hey, you know, this morning we started off uh, really, really well, you know, and it was in the in the previous vlogs. Today, we're just experimenting. We ran up to this, this river here, uh, trying, you know, we're getting a ton of bites. We haven't caught any bites. big, haven't caught any big ones yet, but you know, it's, is part of it but at okay. least we are getting a ton of bites and you know <laughs> having fun really like i said the size is not there but you know more times than not well it's like like if you're practicing for a tournament you'd run up here yeah. i mean it's you got to kind of check these areas out and obviously you probably wouldn't based on what we've seen we probably wouldn't come back here if we were fishing a tournament say tomorrow be like, well, you know, we're confident in some other areas that have a little bit better quality, but there could easily be, you know, two to three, four pounders up in here too. Yeah, absolutely. And these are proven techniques that, you know, we use and they're going to help you guys catch more fish. Yep. Really, no matter where you're at, but especially when the bite's really, really tough. Uh oh. Uh oh. Old hammerhead? Digging? Uh, it feels a little better. Dude, taking some line. A little bit better, Jared. A little bit. A little bit better. Nico straight. I love how these, you know, the baits will slide up the line here. You really save the bait, but, you know, that's, that's a little bit better. I mean, definitely a lot thicker for sure. A little spotted bass there. A little spotted bass. Got to release her. Get him. Dang, dude. This is fun. Dude, look at this one. Oh! Uh huh? huh? Dude, it's crazy. Like, you know, I mean, it's kind of a weird technique. I mean, this is the most fish I've ever caught on, on a float and fly technique deal, but it brings me back, dude, when I grew up in Minnesota and I was like five, walking out to my end of the dock, throwing a bobber out with a night crawler and just catching walleye or pike or bass, whatever, and watching that bobber. I mean, that's just, just fun. Kind of brings you back to when you were a kid and, you know, and, just watching that thing, you're like, oh, you kind of get addicted to it. For oh, sure. Look. So, do you miss swim baits, flipping sticks? Or are you a bobber guy now? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just doing this because it's probably the last time I'll get to do this this whole year. Uh, and it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of, I don't know, it's a different technique than I've ever done. Yeah, you're really, you're I know guys catch big ones. I mean, guys win tournaments 
up here in some other areas of the country too. Yeah, and right now we're covering really both spectrums of uh, the water column. I'm throwing down on the bottom and that 25, 30 foot range. You're throwing up on the bank, getting suspended fish. So it's, um, it's good, you know, if one guy was to really get onto them, a lot bigger fish, and we'd know really where to target too. Dude, right on the bank with the fly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dude, right on the bank. It's almost like fun is throwing top water. Not really. <laughs> Not really, but man, it's fun. Dude, that's the deal though, these these longer rods, huh? Because you gotta pick up so much line and, and we mentioned it in a vlog a couple weeks back about how much line you could pick up on these reels. Yeah. You know, I'm throwing an exist. I think what is that? This Surtate? is a Daiwa uh, this is a Daiwa Surte, yeah. Yeah, so the amount of line you gotta pick up, especially you know, on something like this fly or when you're fishing down there deep and they're eating it and coming up at you. You gotta have that faster gear ratio to catch up with them. You know, I agree. I mean, I, I, I totally agree. Uh, the, the rods I prefer for, for, you know, doing what Jared's doing today are uh, definitely, you know, seven, six, mm -hmm. maybe to eight foot. You know, Daiwa's got some great ones. He's throwing the- Seven, six, yep, tat medium light. Tatula one, uh, medium light. You know, that one, the Daiwa Tatula Elite seven, six. Uh, Seth fighter rods really good and really For for you know, like the Nico rig like I'm throwing I'm throwing pretty close to that seven foot four So you really see a trend right now uh, With longer rods, you know that seven three to seven six and a spinning rod where years ago We didn't have that seven foot was really six tens was a big rod. Yeah, six yeah, ten. Yeah. So you get that longer rod again. You're gonna have a higher higher gear ratio reel You're gonna be able to pick up a lot of line really quick, resulting in catching more fish. And just, uh, mm. you know, so make it a little bit more fun. You know, like say years ago with those six foot rods, stuff like that, spinning rod techniques, you lost so many fish. So that is definitely a deal, buddy. Oh! Digging? That felt pretty good. Like, like for, the day? <laughs> For the day. <laughs> like a two younder. Jared? Yeah. Nothing. Up, Forgot dude? nothing. I don't know, Cody. Dude, there's no bite to him, man. Yeah, very subtle. Uh oh. Nice fish? Uh oh. I don't know. No. No, he's just dogging me. Eating the robo, Ned Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Eating the robo, Ned. <laughs> Hogging them, dude. dude. I mean, there's some <laughs> trophies right dude, here. They're trophies. <laughs> Jared loves Shasta, dude. Like I might start here and, and then go up there. <laughs> if I was in a tournament. <laughs> you, you can't drive past this hog spot. <laughs> Get him. There he is. Another one on the float fly, Cody. Dude. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey. Dude, I'm I starting to appreciate this float and fly. I mean, it's kind of fun. Dude, that's a nice one. Hey, what did I tell you about this, this wall? <laughs> dude, he says, all right, man, we need to get one good one. Let's go to this wall. But it's been fun, dude. Look at that thing. <laughs> it's been a fun fun day. We caught a lot of little ones. Caught them on the Robo Ned. You caught them on your, your Nico. And I caught some on a fly. So that's pretty cool. But uh, tomorrow, what are we gonna do? Go to a different section of the lake, try some different techniques? Yeah, I, I, de I definitely say, you know, we go to uh, a different section of the lake. You know, we've really kind of fished most of the lake right now. We're catching a ton of fish, a bunch of different techniques. And, uh, you know, each end of the lake seems to be a little bit different. But you know what, Jared, like always, having a blast. Today was really, really cool. 
Uh, caught a ton of fish today, absolutely. Ton of fish. Ton of fish. You know, caught some nice ones along the way. And you know what, guys? If you guys like this vlog today, make sure you guys like, share, tag a friend. And, Gear uh, giveaway. Make sure and check that out. Stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, we got more coming. So uh, it was fun, though, man. I learned a lot. I mean. You taught me your secrets with this hey, little float and fly hey, that, deal. That wasn't even mine. Jared pulled this out. Dude. You guys, check back in next week. See what we do uh, tomorrow. <laughs>